Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fantasy Football Fellows YouTube channel. My name is Cameron Lawrence, and today we are going to continue to break down the top 24 fantasy football wide receivers. We did wide receivers 1 through 12 on Monday. Today, we got wide receivers 13 through 24. If you want to see our full set out projections for every wide receiver after that and all players, we have over 240 players set out in the Fellas Draft Guide. You can find that at fellasdraftguide.com, plus player videos and big boards to come. You do not want to miss out. Anyways, I don't want to keep you too long, so let's just jump right in. Before we get on to wide receiver 13, let's recap wide receivers 1 through 12, as you can see on the screen. We got here Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, Tyreek Hill in Tier 1, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, C.D. Lamb, A.J. Brown, Tier 2, Garrett Wilson, Amon Ross St. Brown, Amari Cooper, and Chris Olave in Tier 3. And we're actually going to stay in Tier 3 for wide receiver 13, who is Jalen Waddle? He is my wide receiver 15, Lucas is wide receiver 13, and Ty's wide receiver 11. And I know what you're thinking. There is no way, Cameron, that you are that low on Jalen Waddle, and I will explain. Last season, 75 receptions, 117 targets, 1,356 yards, and 8 touchdowns. Two reasons I'm really nervous about Jalen Waddle. First, he led the league last year in yards per catch with over 18. And secondly, he was out-targeted by Tyreek Hill by 51 targets last season. That's three per game. The reason the yards per catch is a little worrisome for me. If we look in 2021, the two players who were highest in yards per catch, Jamar Chase and Debo Samuel. Both of them averaged over 18 yards per catch, and this last season averaged under 12, or Chase was at 12, Debo was under 12. Right? Chase made up for it because he saw a huge increase in targets, uh, Debo, however, did not, and we saw a big dip in production for Debo. And that's where the second part comes into play, is he is not equal to Tyreek Hill. Jalen Waddell is not an equal. Jalen Waddell is a phenomenal wide receiver, don't get me wrong, but Tyreek Hill is on another level. So those targets aren't going to see that huge increase that Jamar Chase saw because he's not this team's one. Tyreek Hill is. We also know that Jalen Waddell is a huge boomer bust wide receiver, obviously, a lot of that comes from the fact that Tua missed some games last season. But he had five games in a top 10 finish and seven games where he finished as a wide receiver 36 or worse. That means he was outside wide receiver three territory in seven out of his 17 games last year. And a lot of this just comes down to the fact that he was 32nd in target share and 59th in red zone targets. He's just not seeing the ball around the end zone. He still scored a lot of touchdowns, right? He had some huge breakaway plays and he's always going to have that potential. But for consistent touchdown production, we want to see higher red zone targets. And just consistent production overall, we want something that's higher than a 30-second target share. So yes, I can see a big regression. That's what I'm projecting in the yardage. I see that coming down. Maybe the targets come up a little bit. But if he just averaged 14 yards per catch, we would see him barely breaking 1,000 yards um, last season, which would be a 30-point fancy difference, putting him down around the wide receiver 16 or 17, not this wide receiver 9 that we saw. That is my big worry, um, but still top 15 wide receiver for me. Next in this tier 3 range is Devonta Smith. He is my wide receiver 12, Lucas is wide receiver 14, Tyler is wide receiver 13. And let me just say before we start, I love watching Devonta Smith play the wide receiver position. He is so smooth. He is so good at what he does. And you know what? I, I just can't get over just how good of a wide receiver he is. The fact that if he was on another team, I feel the same about Jalen Waddle as well. They would both be the alpha. They would both be the wide receiver one. Last season for Devonta Smith, 95 receptions, 136 uh, targets, 1,196 yards, and seven touchdowns. Was the wide receiver nine. He was only 0.2 points less per game than Jalen Waddle, so he was very close to moving up in that top eight wide receivers. Last season, what gets me really, really excited about Devonta Smith for this next season? At least eight targets every single week from Wheat Ache on all the way through the Super Bowl, except for the conference championship week when they played the 49ers and obviously didn't need to throw the ball. I do have to say, Goddard did miss weeks 11 through 13, so that could have played a little bit of a part in it, but I still see Devonta Smith as the target leader in Philadelphia this next season. I see no reason that can't happen. I think he is phenomenal at what he does. Um, he was 19th in deep targets and 30th in red zone targets last season. So obviously, the more valuable targets, as we talked about in, video, in our first video, breaking down um, wide receivers 1 through 12, go to A.J. Brown. 
So that is something that Devonta Smith, I think, is going to hold him back slightly. But the targets and the yards per catch is still around 13. So he's still doing well, right? He's not an Amon Ross St. Brown scene under 11 yards per catch. He's still seeing a decent amount. So he's going to be good for fantasy next year. It's just, can he break through, get some more deep targets, get some more touchdowns, which I, I believe he can. And, you know, touchdowns is kind of really going to determine, is he a top 15 wide receiver or is he a top 10, top seven wide receiver next year? Wide receiver 15, still in tier three for me, is DK Metcalf. I am at 13, Lucas has him at 17, and Ty has him at 15, and frankly, I'm just disgusted in Lucas's lack of faith in DK Metcalf. I mean, just look at the man. I mean, just a behemoth of a human being, faster than pretty much anyone on the field. Last season, 90 receptions, 141 targets, and only six touchdowns. This was by far his lowest yards per catch, but I, I believe that improves with JSN playing the underneath uh, he was a safety blanket a lot of times for Geno Smith. We'll look for him on quick curl routes, uh, different things like that. I think now he's going to be pushed down the field a little bit more, but I don't think that JSN is going to be taking away too many targets from DK at the same time. A lot has also been said about the JSN coming in, the fact that the Seattle Seahawks don't run a lot of wide receiver, or three wide receiver sets. Pete Carroll says they're not going to change their offense just because they brought him in. But DK Metcalf, DK Metcalf is not going to be coming off the field during those wide receiver two sets. And honestly, if I look at his season last year, he feels like the opposite of Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle, uber efficient, outperformed the targets that he saw. DK Metcalf, 11th in targets last season, second in red zone targets with 27 of them, 12th in deep targets and top 10 in air yards. Yet he had his lowest touchdown season of his career and he had his lowest yardage season since his rookie year. I guess last year he did a lower rookie. He had his lowest yards per catch of any year. I I just don't think that either of those say the same. If he sees 75% of those reds are on targets again this year, I just don't see a way where he's under eight touchdowns. He had 10 and 12 the two seasons prior, or 12 and 10 the two seasons prior, rather. And so he's proven that he can be a double double digit touchdown guy. And I think we see a return of that, making maybe this wide receiver 15 spot even a little low for DK this year, despite JSN and Zach Charbonnet joining the offense. All righty, we have two more wide receivers less than tier three. One of them is our wide receiver 16, T. Higgins. For me, I have him as my wide receiver 17. Lucas has him at 16. Tyler has him at 16. Last season, 75 receptions, 110 targets, 1,042 yards, and seven touchdowns. The wide receiver, 18. And frankly, it was a disappointing year for T. Higgins. I, I don't think we can put it any other way, especially when you factor in that Jamar Chase missed four games last year. Right? We were expecting this huge jump again from T. Higgins. He had the same stats in 2021 as he did in 2022. Pretty much. It's almost exactly. It's kind of scary. 74 receptions on 110 targets. Same amount of targets. One less reception. 1,091 yards and six touchdowns. But he played in four less games in 2021. Right? He missed four games. So the fact that he did the same in 13 games as... Um, or sorry, he missed three games. He played in 14 games. So the same that he, fact that he did the same in 14 games he did in 17 games this season, especially when we factor in that Joe Burrow threw the ball five more times a game, is a little worrisome for me. Obviously, this team has spoken nothing or has spoken highly of uh, him constantly, and so I do think that bodes well for T. Higgins. It just worries me the stats from last year, and his advanced stats weren't that great either. 41st in target share, 30th in deep targets, 32nd, 36th in red zone targets. And so for me, what that screaming is, is what we saw last year the ceiling for T. Higgins? Is he ever going to be a guy like where he can break out like a Jalen Waddell, where he can finish top seven with Tyreek Hill? Or is he going to consistently fall in between this wide receiver 13, wide receiver 20 range? I, I, both are good for fantasy, right? I'm not. He's not going to be bad for fantasy. He's too good on too good of a team. But it's can he break into wide receiver one status? For me this season, I don't think he does. I think he maintains a wide receiver two status. But when you're drafting him, you have to make that decision. If you don't think he can, then you shouldn't be taking him at his current price tag between the wide receiver 12 and wide receiver 14. And the final player in our tier two is the old man, Mr. Keenan Allen. He is my wide receiver 16. Lucas is wide receiver 19. Ty is wide receiver 20. And I just want to say, since we started Fantasy Football Fellows, there have been two players that I was banging the drum on. One was Joe Mixon. I have since stopped. I was all over him the um, first season, wide receiver four finish. 
last season, you know, kind of started back off after we saw efficiency dip. Um, Keenan Allen, though, I am still in on Keenan Allen. I think that he is still a great wide receiver. Obviously missed seven games last season, but from weeks 11 to 18 was the wide receiver three. 17 game pace of 127 receptions would have been most in the NFL or second in the NFL behind Justin Jefferson, 176 targets, 1,434 yards and nine touchdowns would have been the wide receiver four on the year. Now don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that I'm projecting that as a 17 game pace. I still have him as my wide receiver 16, but we know the ceiling is still there for Keenan Allen. And before I go even further again, I do want to just knock away this He's always injured narrative. You can't trust him. Obviously, you have to be careful. Someone his age with a hamstring injury, if it starts popping up again in training camp week one, week two, then yes, we got to temper expectations. But he's only missed 10 games since 2017, and seven of them were last season. Right? He's a guy who might be on the injury report you know, here and there, but he is always playing when you need him uh, or always out on the field. So I, I think we can kind of just get rid of this injury uh, prone narrative on Keenan Allen. Last season was his lowest targets per game with Justin Herbert yet in the first three seasons with him. And he was still at nine targets per game. He was still have been top five in targets if he played every game at his pace that he was on. So there, Keenan Allen has just continued to prove that he is Herbert's favorite target when he is on the field, right? We see Eckler's targets drop as well. They added they added Quinton Johnson, but for me that doesn't scare me. Who that does scare me for is if you ever believe in Josh Palmer, Jalen Guyton, Mike Williams. I think it hurts. But what gets me really excited is that both last season he was top twelve in red zone targets, um, despite missing all of that time. So there is touchdown upside, and they added Kellen Moore. We saw how deadly Ceedee Lamb was across the middle last year. I think he can replicate that again this year with Keenan Allen. I am excited for Keenan Allen this year. I will be drafting him everywhere. And now let's transition to our wide receiver 18, Jerry Judy. He is our first player in our tier four. He is my wide receiver 21. Luke is his wide receiver 15. Tyler's wide receiver 21. 67 receptions last year on 100 targets, 972 yards, and six touchdowns. He was the wide receiver six after returning in week 13 from injury. If you've watched any of our videos, uh, short form videos, you would you should know that stat. That is something that I know Lucas loves um, and does bring him great excitement. But if we're being honest, I think the only reason Lucas is really this high on him is because he's on his dynasty team. That that is the only reason. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Obviously, um, there is a re- there is definitely a lot of reason for optimism for Judy. I just don't know if I'm ready to be as all in as Lucas is on him. He was obviously that wide receiver six in that stretch. So that is a huge reason for optimism. He was also 12th in deep targets, despite missing a couple of games last year. And be, prior to Russ hurting his thumb in Seattle, he was one of the top deep throw, um, deep throw passers in the NFL, both accurate accuracy wise and just willingness to throw the ball down the field. If you watched the Denver Broncos at all last year, which you might not have because they were hard to watch. He clearly separated himself from Corlin Sutton on the field. And Tim Patrick is going to be 29 this year, coming off an ACL. So you sprinkle in the fact that Sean Payton is there, the savior of the Denver Broncos, and we know what he's done in New Orleans. He could be in for a huge year. Right? There is a lot of reasons for optimism. This is, you know, he's primed for a breakout. But we do have to just mention the fact that Judy has put together spurts before, and we've never seen it over a full season. Russ could just be washed, and maybe Sean Payton isn't the guy that can come in and fix this offense. I think part of me just believes enough of each of these that I want to keep him outside my top 20 to protect myself. I still have him ahead of where he's going right now in fantasy drafts. He's a wide receiver 21, so I've still been drafting him. I just don't have this quite the same optimism as Lucas. All right, next in tier four is Mr. Calvin Ridley, my wide receiver 19, Lucas's wide receiver 21, and Ty's wide receiver 20. Back in 2021, he played five games. Remember, this is back in 2021, not 2022, beginning of 2021. 31 receptions, 52 targets, 281 yards, and two touchdowns. That was 14 fantasy points per game. Put him right around the range of wide receiver 13 to about wide receiver 17. His 2020 stats were elite. 90 receptions, 143 targets, 1,374 yards, and nine touchdowns was the wide receiver five. He has a lead upside. We can't forget that. But it will have been 700 days between him playing regular season football games. 
That is just unprecedented. It's an extremely unique situation. We've never seen a guy miss that long when it doesn't have to do with, you know, injuries. We saw it with Josh Gordon, but it had to do with drugs, right? Um, so we've, we've just never seen a guy miss this much football when, you know, he could be, he could come back and still be elite. He could come back, take a little bit of time, and he could come back, and it's just all over. We don't really know. It's leaving a lot of people in no man's land. But I do just want to reemphasize how elite he was in 2020. Seventh in targets, first in area yards, first in deep yards, second in red zone targets, 11th in receptions, fourth in receiving yards, and he was averaging over 15 yards per catch. So the elite upside is there. I just don't think any of us are ready to crown him back saying he's just going to jump into where he was from 2020. Speaking of 20, the number 20, we are at wide receiver 20. Christian Kirk, his teammate in Jacksonville, is our wide receiver 20. He's my wide receiver 20. Lucas is 21. Ty's 19. Ty's the only one that does have Kirk higher, but we all have them within one spot of each other. And I think that's just kind of, you know, just something to keep in mind when you're drafting him. Ridley's going much higher than Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk then would be the better value for all of us. Kirk in 2022. 84 receptions on 133 targets, 1,108 yards, and eight touchdowns was the wide receiver 12. He was everything you could have asked for, and he just proved that he can thrive when he's in the correct situation. On one of our most recent podcasts, Tyler brought up this amazing point that Calvin Ridley in 2020 ran 553 routes. 65 of them were in the slot. Last season, Christian Kirk ran 518 routes. 494 of them are in the spot in the slot. They can coexist together. They play a different position um, within, you know, wide receiver, obviously play wide receiver, but play different spots on the field. So I think they can both coexist. I think they can both do well, but they obviously are going to cap their um, their ceilings, especially when you add in Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne, and Tank Bigsby. There's a ton of weapons. I think this Jacksonville team takes a huge step forward. I just don't think we're going to see wide receiver five from Calvin Ridley again but him and Christian Kirk could both definitely be top 20 wide receivers and Kirk you know when we hear slot a lot of times we just think of these you know dink and dump kind of guys that's not who Kirk was last year he was 12th in deep targets fifth in red zone targets now I would be surprised if the red zone targets remained with Calvin Ridley in town but I could still see them moving the ball downfield towards Christian Kirk so I do have optimism on both of these wide receivers, but I do think they're a, a lot closer than kind of where they're going in drafts. Now we do transition down to our next tier, our final tier of wide receivers with Mike Williams here. He is my wide receiver 18, Lucas is wide receiver 20, Tyler's wide receiver 26. Um, last season, he had 63 receptions on 93 targets, 895 yards and four touchdowns. Obviously missed a couple of games. But you want to talk about a huge question mark, Mike Williams is a huge question mark. Him and Calvin really, for me, are the two guys on this list that are giant question marks. Injured last year. Now they bring in his replacement, Quentin Johnson. He had five top 15 wide receiver finishes. He averaged 13 and a half fantasy points. But this was still a far cry from what we saw in 2021 when he was the wide receiver 12. Now you got Now we are considering the injuries. We're considering the replacement. We're considering the fact that he's only had one top 30 um, finish. I like Mike Williams, but man, it is a little scary. Maybe that wide receiver 12 was just a flash in the pan. Maybe all we're going to get is just flashes in the pan from now on for Mike Williams, but they did bring in Kellen Moore. They're going to move the ball downfield. I still think he is productive this year. Um, thus the, uh, wide receiver 18 ranking Tyler, obviously a little more cautious on Mike Williams. I don't know if I can blame him. We kn- we don't know exactly what the difference in role between him and Quentin Johnson are going to be but it is definitely something to monitor as tra- training camps come. He is a guy who I could definitely see moving around from this wide receiver 21 spot. Next on the list is Terry McLaurin. He is my wide receiver 23. Lukes is 23. Ty is 24. Last season, 77 receptions, 120 yard, or 120 targets, 1,191 yards, and five touchdowns. I need to start by saying I've always been of the conviction that Terry will always be a better NFL wide receiver than fantasy wide receiver. Every time we post a top 12 list, there's always a couple people saying, why is Terry not top 12? Well, because Terry's never finished top 20. A lot of that has to do with situation. A lot of that, you know, he's never had a great quarterback. Now they bring in an offensive coordinator who is supposedly going to be pass first in Eric Bieniemy, who could be phenomenal. Or he could just be a product of Andy Reid 
and Patrick Mahomes. He also, you know, has Sam Howell. A lot of people look at that as big negative. For me, I think it kind of averages out of the shell we saw of Carson Wentz last season. We've also preached all offseason, you know, about Jahan Dotson. He was the target leader after he returned from injury last year, which is true. But Terry still scored more fantasy points per game, and I still believe Terry is the wide receiver one. Terry was top 10 last year in receiving yards, and a big part of that was due to the fact he was averaging 15.5 yards per reception, which I do think they're going to continue to use him like. The only problem is I think Jahan Dotson is, can kind of fit in that same role. I think Terry's always going to be a solid wide receiver too. I think he's always going to be someone around that range. I just don't know if you know I'm ready to say he's going to jump into top 15 this season. So I think he's a good top 15 to top 24 wide receivers. If you draft him, you should draft him knowing that. Wide receiver 23 for us, Marquise Brown. He's my wide receiver 27. Lucas is wide receiver 18. Ty's wide receiver 26. Lucas is absolutely in love with Marquise Brown. I do find it funny, too. Wide receivers 1 through 12, me and Ty disagreed a little bit. Me and Lucas were pretty similar. Now wide receivers 13 through 24. Me and Tyler agree more. Lucas is the one who's a little bit crazy right now. But I think we should just understand that the you know common thread here is that I'm agreeing with somebody, so I am always right. Anyways, Lucas loves Marquise Brown. He'll probably tell you he's got maybe 30% exposure on underdog. You know, he's on 30% of his teams. He's lying. He's definitely closer to on 70% of his teams. And I know for a fact he would never admit this. You know, there I, I have no way of proving this. But Marquise Brown or Jerry Judy is for sure on at least one of ever at least one of them is on every single one of Lucas's teams. Last season, 67 receptions, 107 targets, three touchdowns. You know, played in 12 games. First six weeks, he was the wide receiver five before D Hop came. He did struggle a lot with Colt McCoy, so that is something to keep him um, keep in mind, especially as a backup does project to be the starter week one. But in those first six weeks, fifth in receptions, seventh in yards, and tied for tenth in touchdowns. Um, that is an exciting prospect for this year, as he is going to be the wide receiver one. Ryan Hamar might have a good year, but. You know, Marquise Brown is clearly the wide receiver one. My only concern is what we talked about with um, what's his face, Mike Mike Williams. We have talked about with Jerry Judy. You know, are they just a flash in the pan? We, he's only had one top twenty season. Now you add in the fact that Kyler's hurt. Kyler's not projected to start the season. They're not going to rush him back. It does worry me a little with Marquise Brown. So that's why, despite the fact they're going to throw the ball a lot, I do have him at wide receiver twenty seven. And finally, last player on this list, last player in Tier 5 is Debo Samuel. My wide receiver 24, Luke's wide receiver 25, and Ty's wide receiver 23. He was one of the biggest busts last season. Like, we just got to say it as it is. Um, He had 56 receptions on 94 targets, 632 yards and two touchdowns. 42 rush rush attempts for 232 yards and two touchdowns. Was the wide receiver 38 in 13 games. Let's list off all the negatives. CMC and Elijah Mitchell. They pretty much delete most of his rushing upside. The emergence of Brandon Ayuk in this offense that we saw last year that we didn't see in 2021. Way more target competition. We don't know who his quarterback is going to be. There's talk it's going to be Sam Darnold. So there's just a lot of stuff going on. And talked about this earlier with Jalen Waddle. His yards per catch went from almost at 19 yards per catch down to 12 under 12 last season. 11.6. Not exactly what you want to see, especially when you're struggling to get opportunities in a team with so many mouths to feed. But what keeps him at 24 for me is I just can't ignore the fact that two seasons ago he was the wide receiver too, that every time he touched the ball, he was a threat to score a touchdown. I think that we could see you know him coming back 100 100 plus touches probably this next season, right? He was right around that this last season, only 13 games. He can do special things when he has the ball. I don't think he only scores four touchdowns again this next year. I think he's probably closer to eight, probably pushing this top 24 range. I just am not drafting a lot of him at his wide receiver 16 price tag. But he still is the wide receiver one for me in San Francisco and probably should be for you. All righty. Well, that wraps up another our our full breakdown of the top 24 wide receivers tyler is going to be with you on friday breaking down the top 15 quarterbacks so make sure you have your notifications on so you know when that video goes live so that you can break down the top 50 or watch tyler break down those quarterbacks um for you well with that uh thank you again for watching make sure you check out fellasdraftguide.com get that draft guide get the stats on all these players from all of us fellas and 
I got nothing else, so we will see you on Friday.